Hey there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. So what we looked at just before we left is that the direction we're headed is making something that looks a little bit something like this. This is what we're kind of uh, going to start to mess with here next and noodle around with, uh, which should be a lot of fun and very exciting. It plays with some of the ideas we've already established, especially in thinking about how our oscilloscope method works over here. And we're just going to push that a little bit further as we start to think about how we can start to modify some of our geometry to make that work. So let's start by just taking our O-scope, right? We're going to copy and paste that. Um, again, because that's got a bunch of attributes over here and the color parameters that we already want. It also has all of our size set up for us, all right. And I'm going to call this uh, Topography 1 because we're going to do something that looks strangely similar to this here uh, in a little bit. So let's start to think about um, making, making some changes here. Let's dive inside all of this. Um, what we're going to end up doing is we actually want, still want to have a, a part of this network set up. In fact, uh, we're going to use our feedback system probably again here. So we can leave our feedback here. We know we're going to need to render. We know we're going to need to push something out of all of this at the end. Uh, we still want a camera. We still want a geo. We're going to change our lighting situation here just a little bit. Uh, so that means we're going to go ahead and get rid of this constant. And in our geo under the render page, let's go ahead and get rid of that material. So we're going to need some lights. So let's add a one light. Let's copy paste. We'll add two lights. And we're going to come back to these in a little bit. So the first thing to kind of understand is that we want to take this and rather than just kind of having this current existing uh, kind of picture of what's going on here is we want more of a kind of spectrographic kind of representation. Now, we could certainly do that, right? We could insert an audio spectrum chop here. And now we get something that looks more like this, but this doesn't have a lot of depth to it, right? This doesn't feel very 3D. Uh, this is great. Uh, this is a lot of fun, but it's not totally what I want. So how can we start to play with some of that? Well, let's keep these two things working here. We're going to kind of scoot those over. We're going to disconnect this for a second, though, because we actually need to make some changes to this idea before we start sending it in here to our geo, right? Because I really want this uh, kind of like sense of spectrum, but I want this spectrum to exist in terms of a kind of representation of time. So I want it to have be more than just kind of this current moment of what's going on in the audio spectrum. I want to see what that looks like over the course of um, some durational uh, kind of aspect, right? So over some amount of time, I want to see what this thing lo looks like. So to help me kind of achieve some of that, I'm going to rely on using some texture operators to get at that. So rather than doing some of this uh, kind of storage and holding on to all of these numbers in chops, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that my texture operators, right, um, working in my GPU might be faster for this particular kind of process or this particular kind of idea. So I'm going to start by uh, converting all of this to uh, top information, right? So I've got a kind of, we can see here that if I middle mouse click on this, I've got 16,000 pixels, right? 16,384 pixels in a row that represent what's going on over here in all of these samples. Great, that's wonderful. I'm feeling good about that. Next, what I want to do is I want to add a transform top. Now, I'm going to use this transform top uh, in a kind of interesting way. And we need to kind of set up a few modifications here. So first things first in our transform, what I'm going to need to do is I need to change the actual dimensions of it. So we can see here that the output resolution, uh, rather than using the input, I want to set it to custom resolution. So I want to actually output something that's 256 by 256. Or excuse me, I want to change that also. I want to change this to 50 by 50. I don't need anything quite that large. So I've got uh, a resolution of, the, of 50 by 50. Um, I'm using my custom resolution, and I want to output at my custom aspect, right? Or excuse me, I want to output at my resolution. There we go. So now what I'm producing is something that's 50 by 50 pixels rather than this 16,000 by 1. Now, this is uh, still not exactly what I want, right? Like, this is getting close. We're starting to approach it, but there are still a few things that are wrong with this. So first up, 
I want to actually uh, deal with my scaling, right? So I want to still scale all the way across the width of this, but I want to scale just by 0 0.1, right? I want this kind of narrow band of pixels. That's really what, what I'm up to, right? So I've got just this nice little small sampling of pixels. And now I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to translate this. I'm going to leave it in the zero position and translate here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and translate it 0 0.5 up to the top of my composition. OK, so that's going to look like a little strange, which is OK. Kind of roll with me here for one second, um, because we'll start to pull apart what that actually does, right? So part of what this does, right, a part of what we're up to here is we can take this idea and we can do our handy dandy friend feedback. We can kind of play with this feedback idea one more again. We're going to tra oops, we're going to transform this time with our feedback network. We need to scoot all of this over, make a little bit more room. And we're going to transform just down slightly. So we're going to move this down um, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01 units. So it just moves down slightly. We're also going to use a level here to help us. And then last but not least, we need to composite this. So let's go ahead and composite all this, and we'll connect these guys together. Let's not forget that we need to add this. And finally, we need to complete our feedback loop. There we go. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that with our transform, we're being translated down slightly, right? Just a little bit for every single pass that we go through this. And we're ending up with a kind of trail, right? We've got a kind of contrail here of what's going on. So whatever happened here uh, at the top of our render, then it gets pushed down and then pushed down and pushed down and pushed down and pushed down. So we've got a kind of history here of what's going on inside of our audio. And we happen to know, right, looking over here at our audio, or over here at our chop 2, that that's represented as just pixels. Okay, so that's an interesting kind of look at what's going on there. That's fun. Let's take our level and in our post page, let's just turn down our opacity just a little bit. Because this will let us kind of drift off a little bit here, right? This will kind of take us, and we'll kind of tend towards uh, opacity rather than holding constant. And we can play with that a little bit. OK, so this is moving, uh, moving right along pretty well so far. OK, the next thing that we might want to do is, well, the next thing we should do is we should add a null. Let's terminate all this in a null uh, top, just in case we want to make any changes. And now we actually want to convert this back to chop data. Okay, well, why on earth would we want to do that? Well, we're going to see here in just a second, um, but we need to make a few other changes here to our top two first. Um, for starters, let's go ahead and let's use, choose next frame instead as the download type. Um, this is going to perform much faster, um, and the you know we lose one frame of video or one frame in the translation from audio to video, and um, that's probably not going to kill us in terms of creating a visualization. The next thing we can look at is the fact that we don't need all of these channels, right? Making white pixels, which is what we've done over here, our red, green, blue, and alpha are all the same. So we really only need the R channel. Perfect. All right, so we've got our R channel here. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to, instead of just sampling a single row, we want to go ahead and sample the full image. Right, so now we've got this whole array of samples. This is great. This is really looking much better in terms of what we're dealing with. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to pass that right into our geometry because we're going to use this instead to do a little bit of uh, kind of creative work over here. Now, all of this shenanigan, right, this has taken up an awful lot of room. Let's go ahead and take all of this and let's collapse it to clean that up. We can feel better about that, and we can give it a name if we want. Um, we might call this AV process. 
Okay, so now let's dive in here to our Geo 1 and let's see what kind of mischief we've got going on. Okay, so for starters, we don't actually want this line anymore. Like this was a really lovely idea for us to get started with, but let's go ahead and get rid of it because it's not totally what we're uh, really interested in. What I want to grab is I want to grab a grid. So I'm going to grab a grid here. Now I would like this grid to have the same dimensions, right? I want it to have the same dimensions as over here in my AV process, one of my um, texture operators, right? So I want the grid to have a, the number of rows and columns that correspond to the number of pixels, right? I'm trying to create a kind of uh, representation of what that might be. So there are a number of ways that we might solve some of that as a problem. We could certainly, we could hard code it. That would be one way to approach this, um, which wouldn't be my favorite way, because what if we change some of this? So I actually want to write a little expression to solve some of that. So I'm going to split my view here just so I can see two places at once. We can move over here on the right. Let's move into our AV process. Now, our null here is the last thing in the stream before we convert this to chop data. So that's probably a safe place to actually look for dimensions. So let's go ahead and in the number of rows and columns. Let's expand that. And let's write a little reference to grab it. So I'm going to look up one. I'm going to go up one network. Then I'm going to look for uh, the base called AV process. And then I want the operator called null1, and I want dot width. Excellent. Let's copy that, paste it, and grab height as well. Excellent. So now my grid has got the number of rows and columns that correspond to what's going on over here inside of this texture operator. So that's, that's a pretty solid start. I'm happy with that. And if I want to see what that looked like a little bit better, right, like I could come in here to my grid, I could make it viewer active, hitting the A key, I get W to turn on the grid, and now I can see that grid that I've just made. Okay, yeah, that's looking pretty swanky. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this pane over here on the right. So what's next? We still want to chop two. We're still going to use our chop two over here. So we can plug this in. But, oh, gosh, this is still broken. There are still some things that aren't totally right about this yet. And that's OK. We still have a few more things that we need to change. So for starters, part of what we need to do is we need to think about how some of this is actually uh, working, right? So I want to take all of these samples, and I want to do some kind of novel things with them. So first up, let's go ahead and let's insert a shuffle chop. Our shuffle chop is going to help us reorganize these channels a little bit uh, in a way that's going to be more useful for how we're converting this to SOP data. So our method here is actually going to be to use sequence channels by name. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking much better. That's great. And what we want to do is we want to think about in here, we want to replace the uh, kind of W position right? Or in this case, maybe the Z position. And let's fix that while we're at it. Let's draw this grid in a slightly different way. Let's draw it ZX. There we go. Drawing it this direction. So we want to take this and we want to replace the Y coordinate, right? The Y portion of each one of these points with what's going on over here. Okay. So in order for us to make that happen, let's first convert what we've got here into a channel operator, right? Because we're really, we need to do a little bit of kind of like futzing to make this work first. So for starters, we've converted our grid into a channel operator. That's great. What we're going to do next is we're going to select out a portion of this, right? So we're going to go ahead and grab TY out of what we've got here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a math chop. And what I'm going to do with the math chop is I'm going to use TY, and I'm going to grab my shuffled channels here. And what I want to do is I want to take this now, and I want to combine my chops by adding them together. right? And so we can see here that our new TY 
Now, right, we've taken this and we've added what's going on in our shuffle to this. All right, solid progress. This is looking good. Next, we're going to replace. So now what I want to do, and we need to make even more room in all of our network here, is I want to think about my original, right, my original portion of this. So I've got my original organization. I've got all of these new uh, ways that I've resampled that, and I'm going to replace my TY with this thing that I've made instead. Right, and this is like a little bit messy to see organized this way, so let's shuffle some of this around. I'm going to go ahead and move um, my surface operators up here on top. I'm going to go ahead and grab these guys and scoot them up here. There we go, and that gives us a kind of better kind of visual organization of what's going on. Right? So I've gone ahead, and the first kind of part of this was first I made a grid, and I turned that grid into a series of uh, channels, right? I've just converted that to how it's stored. This is a, an array of numbers. Then I grabbed the Y channel out of that. I added that Y channel to my sh uh, shuffled are reorganized, right? That's another way to think about it. Set of samples coming in from my uh, texture operator. I then replaced what was going on in my original. So, right, TY has now been replaced with what's going on here. Excellent. And now I can take my replace and let's, you know, just in case we make any changes, let's be good, be good programmers. We'll add a null here. And we'll use our null right here on top of our chop to sop. Okay, let's make a little bit more room. I like my networks to be tidy. Okay, so we're still not, we're not totally there yet. We're not out of the woods. There's still a little bit of futzing to do. And what we want to do here now in our chop two is we just need to specify a few things, right? So we know that in here we've got T, X, Y, Z. So we can go back to channel scope of T, X, Y, Z. Great. And our attribute scope. Now we can just say point position, P, X, Y, Z. And now we should see, if we make this viewer active, and we head home, sure as shooting text, we've gone ahead and made some of those changes. Now, we're still missing something, right? Um, like looking at this. What are we missing? Well, it doesn't feel like this has got any depth to it. And that's because we don't have any normals, right? We, haven't, we don't have any normals here yet for us. So we can use this little toggle switch uh, right in our chop two to compute normals. And now we've got some normals. We've got this kind of liquidy, gooey looking, very fun uh, piece of topography, right? That we're making by converting audio, which is awfully fun. Okay, so we're going to change one other thing while we're here. And that's because the last part of what we want to do here for this particular effect, and we'll come back and make a slight alteration, is we're going to head over here to our grid. And instead of making this a mesh, let's just do a, a polygon. Or actually, no, let's leave it a mesh, as a mesh. Mm, I lied. Let's make it a polygon, and let's just do columns. There we go. Right, so now we've got kind of this action going on. Now at this rate, we probably don't need our normals just yet. Actually, let's go ahead and leave them on for right now because we're going to want them probably. All right, so let's back out here. We can see that, all right, we've made some solid progress. We're going to take our geo. Let's in the X form page, right? We can change our scaling back to, oops, not zero, zero, but back to one, one. We're probably going to want to translate this maybe like down slightly. Well, let's actually leave it here because now we need to futz with some of our camera settings. So we're going to take our camera and we're going to grab our geo. We're going to ask our camera to look right at that geo. So now as we start to move this camera around, we'll still be able to see this, right? And in fact, if we split our view and open up our geometry viewer, this might make it easier. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab my camera. And I think I'm going to translate me over a little bit. 
and I want to get a little bit closer. There we go. What's that starting to look like? Yeah. Up a little bit. Okay, so this is a nice start, right? This is kind of pushing us in the right direction. The next thing I want to do is I want actually want to uh, play with my lights a little bit. So I'm going to turn up the uniform scale of my lights to 5. Oops. 5 and 5. Great, making them a little bit easier to see. I also think that what I want to do is I'd like to make them cone lights instead. And I want them, I want my lights to also look at my geometry. So I'm going to grab my geo and drag it here in my look at. Okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and start to play with the positioning of these lights, right? I might bring one over to the right and in a little bit closer and do a high angle on one side. And I'm going to repeat the same idea in my light too. So I'm just going to translate in the opposite direction. Negative five, I think is what we were, four and five. Let's double check all that. Great. So now I've got two high angle lights, relatively high angle lights, pointing down here. Right, I can see that that's rendering this in an interesting way. Let's go ahead and split our view over here. Right, we haven't tried this before, so we're going to split it top bottom. And over here in this panel, what we're going to do is we're actually going to decide that we want to view our panel. Right, so what this is bringing up, which we forgot about, is that our feedback network is still here chugging right away before we head out of this. So we're already getting some kind of interesting looking um, kind of visualizations that we didn't even know about. Well, that we hadn't actually looked at yet. So while we're here, let's play with a few other things in terms of these lights. So let's come in over here to light one and let's change our light color. So let's maybe try like an orange. Okay. And then this other light, I'm going to give it maybe like a blue. All right, so now we can see that you know, how we're intersecting with these particular lights gives us a different kind of color, right? This is a, a kind of pseudo-psychedelic kind of feeling that we're starting to get towards. We might continue to play with some of the positioning of our lighting here or the angle of the cone. So I think I'm going to translate um, still over a little bit more. Let's go to maybe like eight. And three, how about zero? Completely coming here into the side. And we might do something similar here at zero. Right, and now this becomes a matter of how you want to play with this, right? This is really about uh, experimenting, playing, uh, finding the thing that's interesting to you. Um, we can still, of course, translate our camera. We can play with our camera position and all of this, which is excellent. I'm going to take my geo, and I think I want to scale this just a little bit. I want to stretch it to be a little bit deeper, right? So I'm going to make it maybe more like 3, I think. And I'm going to scale its width here to maybe like 2. Yeah, there we go. Now our lights, we can see here that we've got a kind of fall off pattern here in our lights, which is, that's A-OK, -okay. that's interesting. We might take our camera and back us off just a little bit. Get a little more distance and maybe move to the right or left. We might come into our lights then and start to open up the delta on the cone a little bit. Let's go maybe for 40. 40. And then once you start to find a place where you're feeling good about how this is looking, you can let it be. So that's what we're kind of playing with today. That's this particular um, example. Right? Oh, yeah, that's fun. Um, and that's, yeah, that gets us started here. All right, so coming up next, we're going to take this same idea. We're going to push it in a slightly different direction. Um, so first we'll play with what's going on here in a slightly different way, and then we'll kind of take uh, the same work that we've done and approach it with a different tack. All right, can't wait to see you here on the flip side. <laughs>